Hello plenty people, welcome back to my channel. It is Water Baby Wednesday, which means I will be going through all of my propagations and my hydros and pulling down anything that needs a water change, inspecting roots, doing all that stuff. I've had a few changes since uh, last week's edition of this, so I've had a few new things put in water and a few things that are doing cool stuff. So let's get into it and have a look around. So I'm going to be inspecting some stuff and emptying them and then I'll refill them without the camera running so you don't have to listen to the tap going over and over and over. Put, up, uh, put everything in the sink here, ready to go. Uh, some stuff has got some interesting things going on, some stuff has nothing going on. So let's take a little look. So this is a donkey tail succulent that a friend gave me. You would have seen it in last weeks. There's nothing happening on there uh, yet. wonder if the camera is going to focus better this week than it did last week or if I'm going to end up super frustrated again. Uh, so this beautiful little begonia that I probably need to pot soon has a baby leaf opening. Look at that. Isn't it cute? So cute. So this one has... Um, Lots of healthy roots happening. Uh, it's... Please focus. Thank you. So it's got these beautiful healthy roots happening. It's probably ready to be potted very shortly. I might give it one more week and just monitor it this week and make sure that these roots don't start to turn gross or anything. But at the moment they're looking really happy and it's got another new leaf popping up here. And that other baby leaf has come up over here. So, hopefully that'll be ready for a pot next week. Which will be exciting. I'm just putting these to the side so I don't throw all the glass everywhere like I did last week. Alright, so this one, um, I'm not actually 100% sure on the species. I thought I knew. And then um, some people on Facebook told me that that's not what it was, uh, that it's not, it's not an enjoy or something, and that it's possibly a mandula or something. But it's some kind of pothos. It's pretty. It's cute. It has white splodges. That's, you know, what I'm here for. So this one has a beautiful new little baby root growing through there. Oh, that's super cute. Which is good because this one I've had in water prop since it was given to me and I haven't seen any fresh root action. There's another baby root coming there. Um, I haven't seen any fresh root action since I was given her a few weeks ago. So it's nice to see some movement on that one. This is my uh, silver sword philodendron that lives full time in hydro at the moment. Um, I might put it back up in spring, but at the moment she's a hydro girl. So she's got two new roots because it's been deeper in the water than usual. So I might actually just remove that leaf because it's an old leaf anyway. It's the only leaf that survived before it went into water propagation and it was not doing well at all. And I kept that leaf on it because it didn't have any leaves at all and it needed something. But since being in water propagation, it's grown these new leaves and it's doing really really well so if it wants to grow roots lower on the stem I'm gonna let it just let her do a thing her old roots are still kind of doing all right there's some new oh there's some pretty new root growth on the ends there that's great that's very that's very good to see so she's doing well those are all new since last week though so that's pretty cool got upgraded to a bigger bottle and now um, kind of doesn't fit in her bottle at the same time so it's a bit cute. Ugh, fit back in. So she's kind of fallen in heaps fire at the moment but she's an awkward shape. Her roots are quite big and then you know she's fine. She's happy. Whatever right? If they're happy leave them. So these ones I'm pretty sure I said last week oh I probably need to pot these up in a few days. Well they're still here. I still haven't potted them up. Um, they're still ridiculously gigantic. They are very ready to pot, but 
They're also super happy where they are. So at the moment, I'm just going to leave them. They've got pretty new growth. It's a gorgeous color. Look at that pink. It's so pink. So at the moment, if they're not showing signs of distress, I'm just going to leave them like that because those roots are super healthy and happy. There's no rot or grossness showing. It all looks really good. So, you know, if they're not showing any signs of distress, I'm not going to worry too much about potting them up really quickly if I can get the roots back in the tube. Um, I'm going to need water to help me with that one. Um, I'll do that one in, when I'm doing the rest of the water. <laughs> uh, this one's a new one in water. Uh, it's a purple shield, sometimes called Persian shields, but I'm not sure. I, don't, I like to avoid names that are um, like that. So this is what I, I call them, a purple shield. I have a few of these happening at the moment. So I got given this one in a pot and I was a bit worried about it because as you can see, not happy. Not the healthiest, happiest little baby. So I decided I'll pop it in water and see how it goes. And uh, hopefully it'll bounce back. I guess we'll see in a week if it's doing well or not. It has got some little growth. So hopefully these little growth will show something. I have a feeling this is going to come off. Oh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> so it's got some new little leaves. Hopefully that stays the way it is. And hopefully it might, you know, get some new sprouts up here eventually. And maybe some new roots. But... At the moment, you know, it's surviving. <laughs> it was given to me as a maybe you can save it kind of um, charity case. I get a lot of those. I get a lot of people who uh, bring their plants to me going, well, I'm killing it. Maybe you'll be able to help me or maybe you'll be able to save it. And if you can save it, you can keep it. And so if I can save it, I get a cool new plan. And if I don't, I have to watch the sad, sad death of the baby. So <laughs> it's a bit of a double edge sword so this is my uh mykins it's got a new leaf coming through up here which is pretty i really want to pot this soon i need to do some more research into the perfect soil so if you have suggestions on the type of soil these babies like throw them in the comments um i'm always happy to hear what people think so it's got a couple of new roots happening so this here and this here, that's new root growth. And then the other roots are just plodding along. They're so fuzzy. Fuzzy. They're super happy, which is nice. Lovely. It's good to see. I've wanted one of these for ages and then got gifted this cutting for a plant trade. So I'm really happy to have it because I love getting, I love getting plants off my wish list for trade. So uh, here is one that, you know, decided last week I couldn't say, so I put it on the screen. So if you really need to know the name of it, go back to last week's episode and find these in there. Oh, what's happening here? So this one's got an unhappy leaf, 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 um, which I'm going to just remove if I can. Um... You should use scissors for that. Don't just pull it off like I did. Use scissors. Do as I say, not as I do. So, despite having a funky looking leaf, it's going to focus. You can see, thank you, it's got um, a new root growth as well. So, I think it might just be crowded having them in the same jar now that they're getting bigger. So, now that they're getting bigger, I might pop them into two separate jars. I might give this one away. We'll see. Uh, this one has a beautiful pink stripe in it, so I want to keep this one for myself. But it's also the big one here, just noticed, has a new root sprouting from up here in the in the node. So that's a bit cute. And it has a new leaf opening. So the big one's healthy. So I might separate those into two separate vessels instead of having it in one jar now that they've gotten bigger. You really shouldn't double stack them into your jars like I did. Uh, I only did that because I was really running low on space and they were the same species and I just went, it'll be fine. But don't do that. Like, I've done it here as well because this just snapped off the other day and I'm trying to see if I can um, bring it back. But we'll see yet. It's a bit of purple heart. I don't know if they need a node or if it can just go from a stem. So I'm trying to find out. But it did snap off a fully rooted cutting. So if it doesn't work, focus. 
If it doesn't work, then, you know, it's okay. I have another whole plant that, you know, is doing fine. But, you know, it might bounce back. I've seen weirder things happen. This little cactus that I chopped from another piece of the same cactus. I don't know what this is. It's another mystery plant. It still has nothing but that little aerial taproot that had grown from the beginning. Uh, now, this next baby. <clears throat> oh, this one made me a bit sad. I grew this from a leaf cutting. It was one of my very first propagation attempts ever. Uh, it was my pride and joy, and then it got spider mites, and it got really sick, and now it is this. So I popped it in pop in water a few days ago. It um, has had a few leaf loss since then, so there's a bit of slime on here. So that when I put new water in this, I'm going to give it a really good wash down under some nice running water so that I can try and get all this slime off. But... I have good news because when I put this in, the leaves that were still here were super floppy. They weren't firm at all. Now they're firm. They feel full. They feel healthy. The stem's not floppy anymore. And I'm not sure how well the camera's going to pick that up. Come on, focus on the front of the thing. Thank you. But if you look here, there is lots of new leaf buds coming up. All over the plants, there's some there, and there's some over here. So that's really exciting, um, because I really thought I'd lost this, and I was so heartbroken, because, yeah, I really, I grew this from, like, this much of a leaf with, like, no stem almost on it at all. And then I ended up with this amazingly beautiful full peperomia. And then spider mites happened, and I got a bit too enthusiastic with the treatment, which is what you can see here is a little bit of leaf burn. And then the leaves all started falling off. But, you know, even though it had no roots, has no roots at all, it's coming back. So that's cool. So that'll be exciting to see happen in next week's edition to see how much further it's progressed. All right, next is this big, beautiful begonia leaf. Now, this one still got lots of roots developing. It's still not ready to be planted yet, I don't think. I really want to wait till this root system's bigger and healthier. At the moment, it's still quite small. It's only on one side of the stem, which is a bit funny. I don't know why that's kind of grown like that. Is it's See, only half the stem has roots growing on it. Hmm, interesting. That one's so beautiful. I really love that. Um, the older mama leaf is getting a bit worse for wear, but it's still holding on. It's still got a lot of firm structure in the middle here. The veins still feel healthy. So until those veins don't feel healthy, I'm not concerned. She can go crispy around the edges. That's okay. Placing that one carefully because it's so massive. Uh, here's the test tube set. So this one has some new growth since last week. Look at it, it's cute and fuzzy. Oh, that's adorable. And its root system's super big and healthy at the moment. I'm gonna leave that in to drain it because the system is just, the roots are so annoying to try and get back out. Uh, this green caparata peperomia, which I've actually lost the mama of recently. It got overwatered because go me, because winter sucks and <sighs> yeah. That's a whole other conversation is winter watering. Adjusting your winter watering schedule. Water so much less than you think you need to. And then water less than that. Let me just say that. At least I have this leaf cutting growing so I can have a new green ripple caparata eventually one day. Um, it'll be a while before it's the size of the one that I lost. But, you know, it's okay. Still no, gro no regrowth on this little pink Polka dot. I've got a lot of polka dot plants going on at the moment. Now this nerve plant has grown heaps of new leaves. Look at all this healthy new growth. So that's great to see because, um, yeah, the mama plant of that one's not, not appreciating winter very well either. Maybe I'll take the whole plant out of I might actually do that. 
I'm going to take the whole plant out of my Nerf plant and put it in water prop. So next week you'll see my whole Nerf plant in water propagation and hopefully it'll bounce back. There is, I don't know if you can see it, the tiniest little roots ever. Come on camera, please, 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 thank you. See that you can see the tiniest little peperomia roots ever. Super cute. This is a leaf that fell off that silver pep um, that, that I just had a second ago that is recovering from spider mites. This is another one that I'm just going to leave in here instead of taking out, but you can see its roots have gotten um, massive. It's another one that I really should pot soon, but again, it's, you know, shooting out new growth and it's shooting out new leaves and it's super happy. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it really. Winter's been so harsh on some of my plants. I'm really scared to take some of these babies out because they're so happy under the grow lights and they're warm and yeah, I just, I like them to be happy. All right. And so that's the test tubes. I always tell myself these videos aren't going to be too long and then the last one was, you know, 40 minutes. So I guess these are going to be my long form episodes and then I will have, you know, all my short tips and tricks videos. So hopefully you appreciate both. If you really don't like these, let me know and I, you know, won't do them anymore. So this is a piece of devil's ivy that came out of my big pot. It was floppy and weird in my big pot and um, I was a bit worried about it. So I pulled it out. It had a little bit of rot so I let it dry in front of the heater for 24 hours and then I dunked it in a whole bunch of rooting hormone and then I put it in. Since then I've had to remove a little bit of stem off the end here where it was a bit rotten and that root there, is that okay? Yep, it's still firm. It's dirty, but it's firm, so it's not squishy. And then since then, the leaf has gotten its color back. It's firm again. Like, it's not super floppy. Like, it looks at a little bit in that shaking it around like that. But before, it was like, you know, shake it like a Polaroid picture, sort of floppy. Come on, there we go. But it's a pretty little, you know, golden pothos. And here we have my three new purple shields that I got from one plant. So I got given one plant that had stretched and was not, oh, it's four, four cuttings here, sorry, had stretched and uh, needed to be chopped up for prop and it was uh, gifted to me in a trade. So I chopped it up in a couple of places. I did that live in my Facebook group. So if you want to go and watch me chopping this purple shield up for propagation, uh, I will pop the link in the description for my Facebook group. So I chopped it up. She's got no action yet. They're in these cute little bottles. I don't need to change this water yet because it's all fresh. These are just kind of your, you know, have a look at them for the first time sort of, sort of imagery. So you can still see some of the leftover hormone powder that I put on there. I really don't have much space at the moment, so I'm double jarring things. I really don't recommend putting things, you know, two things in the same jar. I'm changing the water much more often and paying much more attention to the ones with the two jars than I would my other ones anyway. So just, you know, keep that in mind. If you're going to be double jarring it, just just keep an extra eye on them. So this cute little pink illusion um, is doing quite well in here. It has a new little root coming out, which is cute. Again, you can't see the color because I've got my grow lights turned on behind me. So it looks a little orange at the moment, but that is a beautiful pale pink color. And then yes, it's gotten, if we can get it, there we go. So it's got a cute little root just here. Adorable. And then uh, this is my last jar in here that's, you know, worth looking at at the moment. Uh, this is a red climbing philodendron of some form. The mama plant was doing a bit sad, so I chopped off a bit of the top at a good node and, you know, let it dry. And then for, I think I let it dry for a couple hours and then I popped it in some rooting hormone and then I threw it in here. And when I put it in this leaf it was like super floppy and had no like the vein... In the back here, the vein felt very, like, soft and the whole leaf was very floppy and it wasn't glossy at all. And then 
in a little while, it has not been long at all, it has like bounced back beautifully. So the leaf is super firm. This other leaf that even though it's got a bit of damage is now feeling really healthy. So I'm really happy with that. So that's made me so glad because it means that, you know, that I, if I lose the mummy plant, then I have this cutting to hopefully continue my plant on. So it's got another leaf coming through here. You can kind of see where it's starting to come up. So hopefully that new leaf will come out absolutely stunning. So because I had such success with this, I uh, actually took the whole mummy plant out of the soil it was in and I've put it in water prop and I'm going to show you that in a sec. I said I was going to and I did. Here is uh, the nerve plant that I had the cutting from that I mentioned was going to come out of its pot. Here is its baseline kind of first shot for you to kind of look at and see how kind of sad it's looking at the moment. It's again I I think I went from overwatering to underwatering this one because they love water and I repot it and it was getting so big and so happy and then the pot I put it in is cursed, I swear. The pot I put it in has killed so many plants that I'm never potting anything in it ever again. So this now is going to go in water and next week we will see if it has any growth. I'm sure it will. The other cutting that I have in there seems to love water so they seem to be thirsty, thirsty girls. Okay, so now I'm moving on to my little mini greenhouses. I'm actually filming the second half of, half of this on Thursday, not Wednesday, because I ended up getting really, really busy yesterday having to run errands and a few bunch of other things. And so now it is um, what a baby's Wednesday slash Thursdays. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be going through my little mini greenhouses now and checking them, making sure that there's nothing that needs to be removed or all the likes, see that everything's doing healthy. Uh, I spray these two or three times a week uh, when I remember. So in here we have baby Peperomia caparata varigata, which is still doing really, really well, which is good. It's still not ready to transfer out of here. These are some string of dolphin leaves that I kind of just threw in here to see if anything would happen. Um, and I don't see any action yet, but if they're anything like the string of heart leaves that I have propagated, They'll take a while before we'll see anything happening in there, but... Oh, maybe not! <gasps> Look at this! Is that going to focus? Look at that! There is a baby root coming out the end of a string of dolphin leaf. So it can happen. Maybe. I mean, some succulents, the leaves just grow roots and then never actually grow a plant. So, um, you know, it could be like that situation or... I could end up with a whole other string of dolphins. So going to leave her in there and hopefully we'll find out in a little while. This bit of moss has decided to move and my caparata is trying to run away. Um, she broke in two. She broke in two. She broke in two, guys. She broke in two. Oh, no, baby caparata. Just excuse me, moss. What the hell is happening here? She broke. She broke. She broke. She broke. Oh, frig. Oh, freak. Oh, freak. Oh, freak. Oh, fuck. Yeah, okay, I'm a swearer. It's, if you haven't figured that out from my channel already. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so here we have my pieces of my variegated caparata. I have been so careful with this. I haven't touched it since it went in here. Now a bit of moss decides to go rogue. Alright, I'm just going to carefully reinsert this into here and hope to heck um, that she'll be okay because that's a bit concerning. Bit of a spray to get those roots kind of settle back in a little bit oh poor Bubba <laughs> well tune in next week to see if that caparata that I have been propagating for forever decides to cark it or not caparata oh, why am I trying to make puns right now all right so that was dramatic next one 
So in here I have a bunch of silver peperomias, a couple of string of hearts, and a, a I uh, can't pronounce it, another type of peperomia that I had leaves break off. I had a couple of big leaves in here. Um, one was from a plant that I broke, that I brought up last week, which is this one, this one, and this one. I had another big variegated leaf in here, but it just disintegrated and just completely turned to mush. So it was not a thing. Um, so here we have this has started to rot. So I'm going to actually cut that away right now. So I'm going to pause while I go get a razor. All right, so I've got my little razor blade here. Um, you can do this with a really sharp knife if you don't have a razor blade, but um, I do, so I use them for my arts and crafts. So um, I'm just gonna go in here, and you want a razor along well away from where your rot is so that it doesn't keep spreading. Um, I probably could actually just go straight across here. I'm going to be super careful. I don't want to disrupt this baby too much, but I really want to get this rotten bit off here. So this is probably from um, mildew buildup that's dripping off the lid of the thing because I, I have holes cut in the middle and this one's sitting off to the edge. So it's probably had a bit of a water run down from the lid. And so that's why it's gone a bit... Uh, gross on that leaf there because you want to make sure that they've got plenty of aeration um, all right so removed all of those gross pieces of leaf there and then now I have that baby is going to be much happier without that kind of gross rotten leaf around it so that's a silver peperomia that's doing really well these leaves aren't doing anything yet um is that a root or is that a piece of moss that's a piece of moss that's not a root it was a piece of moss <laughs> yeah. yeah so these ones aren't looking like they're doing anything yet oh wait Is that a root or a piece of moss? Oh, it's a piece of moss. The moss is very tricky. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of these silvers, which are still doing really well in here. They'll probably be ready for their own pot soon, but at the moment they're still chilling. There's a couple of string hearts over here that are attached from the roots because they've established or they're growing a bulb. Like this one here is growing a bulb before it's growing any root, so the root's starting to come through there. Uh, there's a heart here that has mushed and disintegrated. I don't think it had enough stem on that one, so that's what happened there, is it would just heart on its own, but I wasn't sure if that would work, so I just threw it in to see what would happen. That one needs a spray down. The moss is really dry, but I will do that when I'm not filming. All right. So this was my Pride and Joy string of hearts that was a couple of meters long, a uh, meter and a half or something long, and now it, <sighs> thanks mealybugs. Okay, so I think I've let this get a bit too wet, so I'm going to leave her open today to dry out. And there's a couple of pieces in here I want to remove that are a bit rotten, but you can see that some parts are establishing, so this is new growth, this is new growth. Um, this is new growth and this is new growth here. So even though I've lost a lot of this string in here and there's a lot of rot happening, like, you know, half of these strings have not survived. But um, at least I'm getting something. So, you know, I'm going to get a lot of base rot, like, bulbs out of this. So where each of these has started, I've got a bulb forming underneath, which is good. So once I get some big healthy bulbs in here... Um, I will transfer the bulbs out and put them in a pot and then it will fill itself out and give me long strings. Eventually, one day, if I'm lucky, I hope. <laughs> I, um, I bloody loved this plant. I was so attached to this plant and then it got bloody mealybugs. So make sure you are very resilient with your hanging plant checking. 
So if you've got plants hanging up on the ceiling and you just assume they're fine, don't ever assume they're fine. Um, get up there and look at them regularly because this one, all of the bottom tendrils looked really healthy and happy. But when I climbed up and had a look at it um, from the actual top of the pot, the whole base had been completely eaten out by mealybugs. Like the entire base of the plant was just eaten out and it was just these tendrils and nothing else. Um, and then, yeah, and it just did not recover. I tried to water propagate the stems, but they were damaged and it just wasn't happening. So I was having a lot of issues with the water propagation. So this was my next kind of desperate attempt to save this poor honey bun. But it seems to be working. Um, so, if, you know, we picked all the gross out of here now. And if you have a look... There's so much happy new growth in here. So, yes, there's been some losses and, yes, there's some sadness behind it. But, you know, that's a new bulb developing here. And that's a new bulb developing here. You can hear me clicking at my dogs in the background because they're being noisy. Come on, out. Out with your clickities. <laughs> yeah, so you can see that lovely new growth. It's doing really well. So that's... A relief, to say the very least. All right. Huh. Oh, sadness. So since last week I cut holes in this one, I used to have it half taped so that it would, like, be open from the tape, but that wasn't getting, um, that wasn't working practically anymore with how I was stacking the containers, so I cut new holes in it. They're not very clean because I couldn't find my razor, and then here's my razor, so... <laughs> Um, next in here is these polka dot, plant, polka dot plants are getting quite big, so they're probably going to need to be rehomed soon, but they're also doing so well in here that I'm a bit, you know, scared to repot them because like they're so healthy and happy and I don't want to upset them. Uh, this Hoya stick, I think it's actually growing. Um. So this was taken off a Hoya Kerry that I accidentally overwatered, and it's hard to tell. I mean, if you watched last week's episode right before this episode, you probably can tell more than me, but I guess we'll keep watching and find out. Because kind of looks like that root there is bigger than it was last week. I will have to go back and watch the other video and have a look. <laughs> All right. So in there is also a couple of peperomias, still doing really well. That one's a raspberry ripple, I think, possibly. It's a bit hard to tell when they're still that little. So they're all nice and moist still, so I don't need to worry about moistening them again. In here is one of my little peperomia trays again. They're still doing quite well and happy. My watermelon peperomia, which is one of the few watermelon peperomias I have surviving at the moment because... I find them difficult. I don't know what it is. All my other peperomias have no problems, but my watermelons are just, they're my problem children. A uh, raspberry ripple here that has its first tiny leaf popping out. So next week, when I do the next edition of this, that will be much more impressive to look at. Uh, green ripple, which is good, because I lost my um, mama plant of this one recently, as I said I think I said that yesterday in the first half I filmed and so I've got this one and one in the water propagation in the test tubes that I've saved from that plant. So, you know, if you if you see your peperomia going downhill, chop a whole bunch of leaves off, propagate them because you might mo lose your mama plant, but you can still, you know, keep the love going eventually. You know, you can keep the genetics going you can save a baby and, and have a new plant eventually. It takes a lot longer and, yeah, you know, it's a bit of a pain, but it's either that or you lose your whole plant. So you kind of got to decide what you want to do. All right, so my last mini greenhouse here. This one is mostly string of hearts at the moment. I, um, I'm going to add probably some new hearts to this soon. So this one is my most successful string of hearts so far, and it has... A pure white variegated leaf like dude pure white variegated leaves is so hard for the plant to produce why are you producing them when you're hardly even a plant like 
actually, you know, because if you know much about variegation in leaves, if they're all white, you, um, it's just sapping from the plant. It's not actually, um, contributing anything. It can't absorb light. It can't absorb chlorophyll. Like, so it can't photosynthesize. So, cause it has no chlorophyll because it's all white. So this all white leaf for me is actually, it's bothering me a little bit because I'm really worried that this tiny little baby mummy plant is going to use so much energy keeping this white leaf alive. And I've been waiting to see if the white leaf's going to develop any green as it grows, but it's really just a pure white leaf. And it has an almost pure white leaf coming out here again, which, you know, if you have variegated plants, a pure white leaf is a pretty high sought after amazing moment. But at this point, I'm actually a little concerned about it. So I'm going to snip, I'm going to cut this baby leaf off, which I really don't want to do. Um, but if I don't, it could actually mean the death of the whole plant. So I might give it a few more days. So I might do it in next week's video. I'm going to keep a close eye on it. If it starts to look like it's going downhill at all, I will be snipping this white leaf off. And if it doesn't go downhill between now and next Wednesday, I will snip it off next Wednesday in Water Babies Wednesday next edition uh, because it can't stay on there. It's just going to sap too much energy from the baby bulb that is trying to grow under here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that round thing is the bulb. So that bulb is going to be giving so much energy to that white leaf to keep it alive instead of giving energy to growing a root system, giving energy to growing this stem here. And I just don't want that. I just, I don't want that. So yeah, if it's not gone by next week, it you'll get to watch it go next week. So we've got another leaf here that disintegrated because it just wasn't enough stem. So I'm noticing with these string of heart leaves, you need to have like a whole stem can I pick one up? Nope. Ha. You need to have a stem, you know, that's kind of significant. Can I get... So you can see here, it's got a bulb forming at the end of the stem. It's got some very happy roots coming up. And then on the end here is a little bulb. So these bulbs can get pretty big on a grown plant. I'm just pausing for a moment. I'm back. Had another cheeky, cheeky dog moment to deal with. Okay, so yeah, you can see they've grown a whole bunch of roots. It's got a bulb growing there. So hopefully that one will chuck up a sprig, you know, a sprout soon. None of the other ones seem to have any signs of leaves yet. So I'm kind of impressed by, you know, how much of a stem... This one here has got now compared to some of these other ones that are all put in here at the same time and um, that one's got a massive bulb coming up I don't know if I can catch that in the light so it's got focus please camera if you don't mind there we go so that bulb check out that and it's got a whole bunch of roots coming out of that bulb too so that's really cool so they're all doing well. I think this peperomia is just plodding along. Yep, so it's got a couple of roots developing. I'm not going to pull it all the way out because it's going to disturb it too much. So I'm just going to leave it tucked in there. So that is all my mini greenhouses at the moment. They're all doing well. Everything's doing well. A couple of, um, you know, lost string of heart leaves. But these ones are all just kind of experiments still. So I was kind of expecting that. All right, let's move on to the hydro babies. All right, so now I'm chilling in with some of my hydro babies. Now this neon pothos has been in hydro for a while and I actually think I'm really behind on feeding it. And I can tell because this leaf is starting to discolor and it's not supposed to do that. So I'm gonna give her a feed in her hydro today, take her out, check her roots, make sure none of the roots are squidgy. They shouldn't be, they look healthy. There's a bit of, um mildew in the bottom of the jar there but she looks healthy however her new leaves have come out a little worse for wear so um 
I might just keep an eye on her. I have one of these planted that's doing really well and this one wasn't doing super well and I recovered it in hydro. But now I'm considering I might pot it back up soon because, you know, she's done well in here but it might be too cold in here for her. Um, I'm in my bathroom so I'm not 100% sure on her. And then moving down, I have my Monstera Deliciosa in Hydro, she's doing well. She's got a new root growing over here from her tap, her major tap root, so that's good to see. Her root system's all looking healthy. Uh, she's dropping a little bit, which is what they do when they're releasing excess water, which, you know, it's in hydroponic, it's gonna have excess water. So, yeah, drip, yeah, drip. <laughs> um, it's opened this beautiful new leaf recently, which is starting to darken, and it was lime green a week ago, so now it is, you know, starting to turn dark and beautiful and grow a little bit bigger. So she's doing well, which is nice. I'll give her a feed when I feed the neon at the same time. And here is my pink princess lady. She has a new leaf that is opening soon, so it should be at least half open by the next week's edition of Water Baby Wednesday slash today is Thursday um, so I'm hoping that leaf will be pretty you know with a pink princess it's always kind of one of those kind of gambles where you're just hoping and praying that you might have a good splash of pink on the leaves this one did have a half and half pink leaf when I bought it so you know, it does have the capability and the mutation in there to give me some good variegation. So, fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed. Let's hope that she uh, produces some nice flashes of pink. She also has, where is it? Down here. I'm going to turn her around again. Sorry, honey. All right. I should have just spun the bottle instead of the plant. Huh. She has another leaf opening here on this lower stem so hopefully that's a nice leaf too so next week we will hopefully have some opening on the pink princess leaves philodendron shelf has a couple of new additions uh, if you watched last week's edition you'll be like hey that wasn't there before and mainly this beast so this one here this was a uh, brought to me by a friend as another charity case of going please save it because like I said I seem to get all of those so this is a philodendron I think it's a red congo uh, imperial red maybe it's hard to tell whether it's got no leaves it was brought to me after a cat decided to use it as a toilet a few times and brought to me in a panic being like can you please save it so I did put it in soil and then its leaves turned yellow because I think it probably had some of the urine from the cat still kind of in its system so I've decided to do a full flush so I took off the sick leaves because they were not happy at all and then I have put her well him apparently his name is Frederick I have put him in this jar and I'm really hoping I can do something good to save him because you know that's such a big healthy fat root stem system that It'd just be such a shame to lose the whole thing, but I'm doing my best. I'm going to give it some seaweed tonic today to give it a soak and hopefully, you know, give it a little bit of a of a relaxing spa bath, I suppose. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to put some seaweed tonic in here and give it a 24-hour seaweed soak. That's the next step. And keep watching. Maybe, maybe one day we will see growth on this and it won't look so awkward <laughs> another new addition this is the mama plant of that philodendron red climber cutting that i have in propagation i snipped the cutting off that stump i think it was that stump and i then saw that how well the cutting was doing in the mama plant just kept getting sadder so i put her in here she's been in here for about two days now so i'm gonna give her a seaweed soak with the other one as well because uh, hopefully it'll help her bounce back a little bit because you know her cutting did so I'm hoping that she will she's got some nice stem I just gotta keep an eye on it for rot because yeah I don't know what's happening with her the poor honey 
Mm. She's just gone downhill since I got her. Poor Bubby. The rest of the fellows are doing well. This pink princess is doing well. She hasn't got any new growth to show, but, you know, she's shiny and pretty. She's a bit dusty. I need to get some of that dust off her, but, you know, she's happy, which is great. That um, leaf that came out there has a nice splash of pink in it. So I'm hoping the next one will. They say a good prune helps with the variegation. So, you know, she had a good prune when it got her. So I'm really hoping that, you know, leads on to some more pinkish grows. Flo was in a bigger vessel last week, but she kept falling into her vessel over and over. So I've given her a tiny little glass cup now. Uh, this new leaf here is going to be opening soon. So I really hope that that's nice and healthy. Fingers crossed. Now, this Imperial, I'm actually going to find a new vessel for her. I think she's too squished in here. Ironically, even though her stem and root system is tiny, I think she might need more space. Because this leaf, when I had it in a bigger jar, this leaf started to develop very fast. And then it kind of has just stopped. So I'm going to give it a feed as well with my other ones. So I'm going to do a hydro feed for all my feeders, for all my hydros today. What I do with that is I just use a very watered down indoor plant food. You can get hydro foods and the likes if you want, but as long as you're feeding them with something, it's fine. I've used, also used fish tank, ex, like ex fish tank water, dirty fish tank water when my friend does their fish tank clean out and that does really, really well for hydros. They love um, a bit of fish poo water. <laughs> so yeah, this red fellow I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a bigger, a bigger vessel for even though it's probably going to awkwardly fall in and I'm going to have to get some wire and MacGyver some sort of contraption to uh, hold it up. So next week, this lady will not be in this. It will be in some not-so-cute MacGyvered wire contraption, most likely. <laughs> Speaking of new vessels, I think this is another one that's going to need a new home. It uh, had a leaf kind of get stuck in development in the jar here, which... I didn't notice happening and now has gone a bit funky. So the leaf has opened, see, slipped back in. So the leaf has opened kind of okay. Hold on, let me just uh, pull it out. Uh, there we go. So the leaf has opened a bit funky. Like on the end, but it's still a healthy looking leaf. So I'm gonna um, maybe even pot this in soil. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm going to think about that today. So next week, you may or may not see this again in a water update. It may end up potted and um, put somewhere to climb because this is a type of climbing fillow. Even the person who gave it to me wasn't sure on the variety. So um, I'm not sure either. Super stoked. My uh, Hydro Snow Queen Pothos has a new leaf. Look. So that's exciting. I've had um, ups and downs with the Snow Queens. The Snow Queens, I find, are a little bit more sensitive to overwatering, so I have overwatered one before, but this one is doing super well and it's water home. It needs a water update, but I'm going to give it a feed too, so it can get new water with a feed. Happy lady. It's got such pretty splashes in it, this one, which is nice. It's got some really nice big green chunks too, which is kind of pretty. You know, they say about 50-50 when it comes to variegation. You don't want too much white. You want a nice half and half so that that plant can develop healthy. Final water baby to look at for today is this little pothos. It's either an enjoy or a pearls and jade. Won't really know until it's bigger and more mature, but it's still got more happy brand new root development happening in here, which is good. And then... It has no new leaves at the moment because it's uh, just recently opened up one. But, you know, I might be potting this up soon. I'm not sure. I might wait till spring. I don't know. It's happy at the moment, so I might leave it a little bit longer. It's going to get a feed today too. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Water Babies Wednesday. It's a bit longer than last week. I told myself it was going to be shorter, but it's not. So if you made it all to the way to the end, all the way to the end, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and, you know, that whole spiel. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. This is Plant Tips with Empress.